Okay, Bum says she's not buying me any more beer, so I gotta grow some grapes and make some wine. And uh, today we are trimming the grape vines. Lots of them. And uh, I'm just gonna get to it. We'll get to the painting bit later and we'll decide if we're painting goats, horses, or grapes. Maybe grapes. They're easy. As the sun sets on Tennessee, we have discovered what type of grape vines these are. We got one red and one white. We're going to make a grape press after these blossom and the fruit comes out, and uh, we'll go from there. This is a lot of work. Time for the painting show. There's a world out there. Go and get it. Night's coming. I'm trying to figure things out here, people. Fucking give me a minute. It's been a long day. You go fucking cut the grape fucking vines so you can make some two bottles of wine. 
Took it over forever. All right, here we go. That is the bowl from yesterday. I signed it. It's so lightly in pale blue that you can't even see the signature, but it is done. And uh, this is starting to feel like work. I don't want to work. I just want to, like, you know, get free money. Like, uh, I want to... Who's that guy? Ah, fuck off. If that's Adrian, I'm going to shoot her. Um, uh, <laughs> that's just natural. Jeez. <laughs> that, that guy, that, that, uh, the, the Jewish guy that wants to be the American president, well, he's just too damn old. That's my feeling. I mean, he's smart enough and everything, but, uh, like, if he's 74 now, how old was Reagan? I don't know. Who cares about the president? All the candidates suck. They're too extreme. What we need is a new type of development in the economic system. We got a beer sponsor, and it's natural ice. And fuck you, sue me, and I'll make the money to pay you because you fucking sued me. Take that. Anyway, not the, the actual beer sponsor's mom, but uh, natural ice is the brand. And, uh, you know, since I cut half that down today, and, uh, we're gonna make a, we're gonna get a girl in a bikini stomping the grapes with her bare feet, like in the movie back in the 80s, you know? And that is my favorite thing ever. You know, like, how do you make the wine? <laughs> well, you throw two 18-year-old girls that are having fun, naked, into a big barrel, just stepping on grapes on it. And, uh, that's how we're gonna make our wine, too. You watch. I do not pretend. Okay, I should have checked my phone though. Okay, not really. I haven't, that's not necessary. It, it, it might be. I don't. I don't even know where the phone is. Okay, here's the phone. It is the great man about the grapes. I just got to text him real quick. I'll read this to you after it, right? I can't do two things at the same time. Just give me a second. Well, I don't know what to call it. going to call this, you know. Okay, no worries. David did it right. David being my stepfather that left me this shit. But there is one red and one white referring to the grapes you saw me cutting earlier. Both are good for the climate and insect resistant. You don't have to do anything. But the vines are over 12 years old, so uh, we should have a productive season if I figure out how to make the wine. Okay, back to the show. Um, so you saw goats today, right? You saw some goats. You saw me walking down the road. Well, you didn't see me walking down the road, but I was the guy with the camera walking down the road. Because I don't have a team until next week. So this is all just kind of like primer, you know? Getting you into the thing, watching me paint silly pictures of like, you know, the bull. That, that was really kind of the bull just stick his junk on and be like, hey, what you got? If I showed the bull, the bull would have cried and ran to the other side of the fence. But anyway, uh, the goats, uh, 
on the other side of the road, the horse, big white horse. Uh, there's another horse over there, brown horse. Yeah, they're, they're miniature horses, kind of. They're, they're not like the little mini horses, but they're like this tall. So I don't know what kind of horse they really are. You can't ride them unless you're like a midget or something, which is an idea. Um, but like down the way, I can't talk to you right now, bro. Um, down down the way, um, we got like real horses, like man horses, you know, that you can ride like with uh, one of those like lances with on one of these horses. Down over this way, and they know they got like five or six of them. So I'm gonna talk to those people about doing some like real horse shit, you know. And uh, we will find out. But uh, what are we gonna paint? I don't feel like painting the goat. Did that back in the 90s. Say like uh, 1990. I actually uh, did a copy of a big copy, like four by five foot copy of uh, one of uh, Alistair Crowley's Thoth tarot deck. The one with the goat. Might have had a third eye or something and I uh, had all this weird demon shit all around it. And uh, when I looked at those ghosts today, I was like, hey, anybody want some goat leggings? You know, like, a... it's always fun to dress up in goat leggings and dance around the fire, I know. But is that really where we're at at this stage in life? I mean, the kids coming up, they're not, like, even part of my audience yet, you know? Like, so, whatever, man. I mean, like, I'm thinking of painting a sister field. Because it's educational to a point, Sistifia, I painted multiple times. There was a guy named, a German guy named Dackerman that painted Sistifias in about uh, the year 2000 and he showed at the Carnegie International. I had already been painting him for 10 years, but he got big at painting a Sistifia and doing like a little sketch of a fucking house on top of the thing, which isn't the point. The Sistifia it's basically a fractal formation, and almost everything in nature is derived from a fractal formation. It's a way to explain how nature develops. It's a mathematical equation, it's a lot of shit. So anyway, I'm just going to, I haven't changed my underwear, slept or fucking uh, on drugs or anything. Changes water is what I'm getting at in days, but I'm just going to try to uh, kind of like get the wrinkles out of this canvas and I don't care what color it is, it's all the same goddamn thing, maybe it messes your house and you buy it, maybe it don't, but maybe it messes somebody else's house and you buy that, you know, so uh, that's where we're uh, getting to, you know, I mean like uh, there's, there's these artists that frame their canvas and uh, I never do that, because the frame is the intermediary between the colors of the artwork and the formation of the artwork, the structure of the artwork, all, all that stuff, the, the art, the painting, and uh, like uh, what you've chosen for your uh, living room set. And a lot of assholes don't get that. They, they want to put a red frame around some canvas, and it doesn't totally through with what you're trying to do. Like if you have a Darth Vader coach and a Darth Vader living room set and a Darth Vader uh, like a uh, kitchen, you know, you know what I'm talking about guys. Like uh, the black on black and like stainless steel sinks, maybe ceramic, this or that, but it's all black, you know. And it's all like super cool. And then some like girl wants to put it, come in and put some daisies in her shit. Like, uh, that is not really what you're going for, you know? So, why put a frame on? Buy one yourself. But this stuff that I'm doing for the next couple of days, I might do nine more of these because uh, I got material to do. So, uh, like, you order right from me, you write nice to me, I'll include that dollar roll of duct tape for you. And just stick it to the wall, man style. And uh, that'll be your secret. But if you're a woman watching, I'll get a color duct tape, pink, and uh, you can do that. So that's a painting for today. Now that's just the background. Now I gotta fucking uh, 
really got to contemplate because if I paint on that with acrylic, it's going to bleed all over. I had that problem the other day. I've done that before. Always in a rush. This looks great, but it's wet as hell now. But the good thing is most of the wrinkles will come up. So when I do take the brush over it, it doesn't catch a wrinkle and go skip. And there's a line with it like a, you know, a little fumble in it. No fumbles in their lines, people. Straight to the point. Save the world. X, Y, Z. Know what I mean? Ask me questions. Eventually, on knifeconceptual.com, I am going to put up a link where you can actually like, contact me. But right now, I really don't give a damn because we're just building up an inventory and uh, getting ready for Mila Yonavis to come uh, do some body prints. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Drink some beers. Maybe she'll bring weed. I don't know. Maybe she'll bring her kid. That's a rat. We got an extra room. It don't matter. Maybe she'll drink some of the wine to make, but that's months away. Everything's in negotiation. It's funny. I made this movie back in 2012 called Fiction 2012, right? A glorious title. And, uh, like, uh, the lead uh, ended up dying two weeks before we actually, like, put anything on video. And uh, he was supposed to play me as a mentally ill artist trying to make it, you know? And uh, he read the script and he was like, fuck this. <laughs> not, not really, that's, it. that's not how it went at all. But uh, I, I considered that for a while and it really, really troubled my mind, you know? And I was like, you know, I got the mental illness and he was mentally ill too, he was playing me as a mentally ill guy playing a mentally ill guy and fucking about like some guy coming out of a psychosis trying to save the world. And, uh, he just, uh, dipped, you know, like, best actor ever. Yep. Anyway, I got some shit in L.A. now with that movie, Fiction 2012, getting checked out by a horse's ass, or a fucking bull, or a goat, I don't know what they're, and, uh, possibly, possibly, will be published. Somehow. Probably on YouTube, right? <laughs> Could be anything. It's just, it's an art piece because uh, all we got was the background pieces, you know? And, uh, it kind of sucks, but, uh, we, we got enough to explain what the psychosis was, and, uh, you see me now, so it's kind of like follow-up. I'm talking to my other buddy. Uh, we, we used to drink gallons of LSD at a time, right? And, uh, we both came down with the mental shit. And, uh, like, uh, he used to be the camera guy. We both moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is getting boring, right? Like, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to make movies, because we could go to Pittsburgh Filmmakers, which was at, like, 1991, 92. There was two places in the country you could go where you could just pay and go and get your education without the academics, because we both uh, forgot about doing that part, you know? And uh, it's Pittsburgh filmmakers in Pittsburgh, and there was a school in Chicago. And Chicago was too big and scary, too expensive, or whatever. So, yeah, just how we ended up in Pittsburgh. And uh, he's still got like tens of hours of footage that stretch across a goddamn decade of us from 20 years ago that we're eventually, hopefully, going to add into this madness, whatever I'm doing. And, uh,. You know, then you can kind of see, like, the development, the onset of the mental illness, the, like, into the shit, and then fucking the climbing out of the shit, the bullshit, and, uh, the horse shit, whatever. And, uh, make it. And life is good again. Except, like, uh, I mean, he's still so uh, paranoid about shit, he can't even answer the phone. Like, uh, me, like, I got over my paranoia. Somewhere around 2008, there's, there's a Pittsburgh newspaper called the Tribune Review. And I'm dry already, motherfucker. The Tribune Review, and uh, they published me when I had this gallery show. And I'm standing there like this, right? In a fucking cool-ass kung fu suit. And behind me is a painting on the wall. There's actually two. Um, one of them's still around, one of them got burned, I don't know. But... Uh, the 
one behind my right shoulder is the painting of a body print. I do body printing, I just don't talk about it too much in the public. And uh, so anyways, I, I get naked one night, right, in one of my galleries that I had in Pittsburgh. And I paint myself down, my junk, everything. And I just go, boom, <laughs> do a belly flop on a canvas. And that's the painting. I, I already painted the background, so I just like do a print on top of it. And behind me in a kung fu suit is my junk printed on canvas in one of the two major pit <laughs> Pittsburgh papers, right? And uh, so, you know, it's like I'm the guy that did Dog with a Heart on whenever that was, 2006, 2007, October, City Paper, Pittsburgh. It's my uh, icon or whatever on uh, Facebook now. And, uh, yeah, it's like a modern art. It's just like you don't know what you're buying. But my main thing is X minus Y equals Z, man. Like, if I, like when we did the hand prints the other day, like, uh, If I can make that thirty-five minute dollars in uh, whatever you know worth of product in like whatever that was ten minutes about, like uh, then that's really kind of what we gotta chase after. Not everybody can do it, but uh, goddamn, don't give up, people. Um, <coughs> Darth Vader stuff. Uh, that's what I was thinking. But I'm a green. We don't even use green for anything except just a few. So, are you following me? Is this too long of a shot? Tyson Chicken Factory, man, you're getting tripped. <laughs> there was a guy back in the, he must have been the late 80s, or really early 90s, a Japanese guy or something. No, I don't even know. Uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, he did this uh, film called Baraka, which was a, uh, uh, we're going to use this brush, just showing the uh, kind of uh, patterns of things in the modern world, you know, like. And one of them happened to be at the chicken factory. Which was, it was funny at first when you see these little baby chicks going into the factory, but it got like really scary really quick. Man. And then you're like, I'm not ever eating chicken wings again, man. Like, because they, you know, it's like a process, man. I mean, the process ain't play. Really, I mean, sister Fia, you always wanted one of these, I know. All you kids at home, Ackerman stole my shit, and he went international. Faggot. Yeah, I'll say faggot. I like gaming. I don't like the faggot type. I do not like guys that dress in dresses. Oh, yeah. All right, we're almost done. This is about all we're doing today. I'm going to sell this one for 10 bucks. Yeah. You sexy beast. Whoever you are. Staring. And being in the same clothes for four days. You got no idea. I, I was telling my mom about all the dangerous things in Pittsburgh. You know, like. Mas mafia and Freemasons and motorcycle gangs are mine. You know, like. Like, and uh, she was like, oh, yeah, you know, we had that in the 60s, you know, like, uh, I should, uh, really stretch in it, because I'm not going to do it over the jet, I think I fucking screwed something up, but, uh, yep, right there, screw that up, that fell right out, okay, this is getting bleak all over, isn't it, that's what I'm saying, okay, oh, my body hurts, don't get old, folks. That's what the old folks say. I'm not old, but I'm just reiterating. You know. Okay. Okay. Lots of green to go all around. 
don't make a sound. Okay. So this could be considered like almost like another painting, right? It could be considered a wall hanging for like your hippie types that are watching it. Uh, smoking your fucking weed. Send me some! And, uh, you know, I'll give you a band for free. Or it'll be considered trade. You know, that's what we like to do. Oh, oh God. tens of thousands of dollars and this has happened like a number of times since I've been here and I've only been here a couple of months and I'm in this hideout spot you know so uh, fuck the motherfucker goodbye see you in the next life probably come back as your girlfriend or something you know? anyway okay you get the idea and this is basically the thing it's got nothing to do with goats or cows, or horses, bulls, dogs, anything. But it's got everything to do with everything. That's how nature works. It's a repetitive pattern. It's called a fractal. They're not... How do you say it? I want to say specific. Is that the right word? It is. Here, take a closer look. You probably couldn't even see it. Do you see it? Do you see it now? Can you see it? Like flowers work that way, that's for sure. It looks like a big daisy, but it's green, you know? Or like green plants or anything, you know? So whatever, I, I think we got it like our episode for today. All right. Uh, get off my shit, man. It is Pavi. Signing off in Tennessee. I guess that was episode 9. Somebody sent me a couple lines or something. Or like something in the mail. And I uh, hyped me up. I, I had this. Uh, I, I was talking to this woman on uh, Facebook today. Yeah? And uh, she propositioned me like. I do hookups. And I'm like. <laughs> You're talking to me man. My unemployment ran out a week ago. I haven't sold shit. I don't got a job. I gotta pay child support. And you're asking me to fly you from Texas to fucking here to like bang me? Are you out of your fucking mind? So whatever. It was probably dude in jail. <laughs> whatever. That's the thought of the day. Alright. Fuck it. Later.